two o'clock. So um, let's let's begin our um, uh, two hour uh, lightning round program here. Uh, we're so grateful to have you join us. My name is Brewster Rhodes, and I'm the co-chair of the Ohio River Recreation Trail. I live in Cincinnati, avid paddler, uh, cyclist, outdoorsy kind of guy. I'm retired, so this is one of my volunteer jobs uh, in my retirement, uh, and I just love it. So it's especially exciting to work with all of you. Um, and I, uh, for me, this is very personal. That is, Portsmouth is personal. As I started doing some research about the community, my wife and I spent uh, a couple days in, in Portsmouth last fall went to the 1810 house, did some research. My wife said, you know, um, John Michael Klingman is in your family tree. Turns out he's my great, 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 great grandfather who then built the 1810 house after buying a square mile of Portsmouth in 1805 uh, and uh, gave it to or built it for his uh, son-in-law, Aaron Kinney, uh, and died there in 1816. So uh, I, I feel like I'm part of you all. <laughs> Think about that crazy history. So, of course, the best place in town is the 1810 house. Um, so why don't we get started, Andrea? Do you have uh, the slides to go on? Andrea? Uh, I do, but I think we we're going to do introductions where we could see yes. people's faces first. All right. So if you all would be so kind as to turn your screens on, um, I'm going to turn this over to Wendy. Um, who you all know, and Wendy, along with Tracy, did such a marvelous job. We are so grateful to both of you for recruiting folks and engaging the community in this project. Um, uh, but Wendy is going to do the quick round of introductions that is introduced. Have you all introduced yourself? Wendy, take it away. All right, guys. My name is Wendy Wall. I represent Connect Southern Ohio Senior Games and uh, SOMC here. And I get the privilege to let you guys have 20 seconds to tell us who you represent and what you love best about Portsmouth. What I love best is that you're all here and that's community. LaVette, you're next. All right, Nikki, you're next. Hi, I'm Nikki, owner of Moondog Delivery in Manchester, Ohio. I'm representing Adams County and Ohio Brush Creek and looking forward to meeting everybody and hearing what's going on. Great. Ryan Stump, you're next. Kara Stump. All right, I'm Kara Stump. I'm not putting my video on because I am finishing up driving right now, but I uh, represent Shawnee State University. I'm the Alumni Community Events Office, and I also, like Wendy, just love the community in Portsmouth. Thanks, Kara. Gina. Hi, guys. I'm Gina Collinsworth. I work with the Ohio, uh, OBRDC, Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission. Sorry about that. And um, I love the people in our town, and you can see by Wendy's example and everyone on here, we are engaged and ready to move us forward. Awesome. Dan Shirey. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dan Shirey. I represent the IBEW Local 575, the local electricians union. And I can't lie, my favorite thing or the thing I love most about Portsmouth is probably a good uh, ribeye at the Soda River. <laughs> <laughs> Great, Dan. Oh, yeah. Hey, Patty. Patty Tennant. Patty Tennant, I work with the Soda Foundation, and my favorite thing about Portsmouth is the generosity of the people who live here. Awesome, Patty. Tony Dingle. Hi, my name's Tony Dingle, and I'm with the uh, Soda Foundation and also a part of Connects. I just love our community because of all the, the positive people, and um, I'm also the wife of Andy Cole, who's our city council third ward. All right, Andy Cole, you better talk then. Well, Andy's on here, city councilman. Jacob Taylor. I saw you, Jacob. I know you're- There we go. Leader. I was talking, but it wasn't working. I forgot that. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'm Jacob Taylor. I'm from Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission. Uh, work with Gina, uh, do some planning there, and uh, just happy to be here. Great. Sam. Sam Sutherland, city manager for city of Portsmouth, and Greatest thing I love about Portsmouth, it's home. Awesome. Christy. 
Hey, I represent uh, Southern Ohio Mount Mountain Bike Association. I almost said SOMC. Uh, born and raised here in Portsmouth. Uh, one of the most exciting things is just seeing the change and everybody coming together and the great momentum we have to build Portsmouth into a great place to come visit and live. Awesome. Charlotte, Charlotte Gordon. All right, I'll unmute. All right, I have two hats. I um, am with the um, Southern Ohio, or I am with the Art Museum, um, Southern Ohio, uh, boy, I'm drawing a blank, and also City Council, so uh, second ward, so thanks. Brian Bartley. Uh, Ryan Bartley, I'm the park manager at Shawnee State Park, and um, I'm just glad to see everybody working together to see what we can offer everybody in the community to make it better. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Jeff Bauer. I'm Jeff Bauer, I'm president of Shawnee State University. Uh, I, uh, I can't think of anything I don't love about Portsmouth, so let's leave it at that. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Martin McAllister. Hi, I'm Martin, and I'm here representing a nonprofit called the Friends of Side of Brush Creek. And uh, I'm just excited to see Portsmouth placing an increasing focus on ecotourism. Nathan. Nathan, Hi. I saw you at one point. There you go. Uh, Nathan Prush, I'm the city engineer for Portsmouth. Um, and what I love most, uh, probably the positive momentum that we have, and I'm looking forward to uh, continuing that. Awesome, thanks, Nathan. Joe Pry and Sue Burke, you guys are together. Uh, yeah, we both wear many hats and right now we're representing Main Street Portsmouth. And I think right now, just looking at this list, I'm excited to see so many members of council, uh, city employees, and also Shawnee State representatives. It's kind of exciting. <laughs> Very exciting, I agree. Maxine Malone. Maxine is here representing 14th Street Community Center. Jason Ashworth. Jason, Jason is, uh, there he uh, is. Uh, here representing Portsmouth Connects. And uh, I'm just excited to see this many people want to come together to help Portsmouth be better. Thanks, Jason. Mayor Dunn. I am Sean Dunn. Um, Portsmouth City Council Mayor of uh, Portsmouth and uh, Sociology Professor at uh, Shawnee State. Um, my favorite thing uh, right now that's going on in Portsmouth is the collaboration and momentum going forward. Thanks, Mayor Dunn. Holly Johnson. Holly is uh, with Economic Development of Adams County, and we've worked a lot with her to collaborate with some things with the forest and different things. So Holly, I know you're here. Uh, Summer. Good morning, afternoon, wherever you're coming from, Adams County or around the world. Um, I'm Summer Kirby at Compass Community Health. And one of the favorite things that I love about Portsmouth is the memory of growing up as a kid and your grandparents or someone older, wiser saying, we live in such a beautiful area. And you thought, oh my gosh, stop saying that. That sounds so boring. And now I say it to my children and they're not completely tuning me out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Summer. Okay. There's probably some people that I left out. So help me out. If I left you out, will you come on and tell us that you're here? Uh, Commissioner Scotty Powell, I'm here with Commissioner Coleman. Uh, Commissioner Davis will be in and out as well. Um, we just love the people and our natural resources. So thank you. Wonderful. Oh, I see Gerald. Come on, Gerald. Hey, I'm Gerald Cadogan. I'm representing, oh, I'm the head coach for Shawnee State swim team. Um, I wear a lot of hats. I also work at Portsmouth City Schools and a part of the Portsmouth Unity Project. And I'm excited to be a part of what's going on here. I'll jump in here. This is uh, Andrew Fide. I'm a professor of history at Shawnee State. I'm the director of the, the new Center on Public History and the developer of the Scioto Historical mobile app and website. And, you know, what I love about Portsmouth and the area is the history, of course. We have an incredible, rich history, um, but also the Shawnee State Forest, which I, I dearly love. 
And Jenny, are you with Ryan? I'm sorry if I didn't call you out, Jenny Richards. Yeah, we're here. We're representing Shawnee State Park, and we love a lot of things about Portsmouth. We don't even know where to get started. We're just so thankful that you're all here with us. We get to brainstorm with you today. Great. And Wendy, I'm Natalie Purvu. I work for ODNR in the Division of Parks and Watercraft. Hi, Natalie. Hi, out of our Columbus office. Um, and one of the things I love most about Portsmouth and coming down to the Ohio River is that I live in the headwaters of the Scioto River. So it's a big deal for me to travel down 23 and see how big the river just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because up my way kind of looks like a ditch. So it's so <laughs> impressive by the time I hit Portsmouth. So That's if I could, awesome, if I could just say, Thanks Wendy, it's wonderful to have Natalie with us because she's the key person with ODNR when it comes to watercraft and trails, and she has a huge area of responsibility up there. So thank you so much for joining us, Natalie. Thanks, Bruce, sir. Anybody else, Wendy? I'm looking, but it's hard. Yeah. You guys have got me on lots of screens. So if right. I left you out, I'm in here. Hello? Gary Hilton. Right. That's with Friends of Portsmouth. Great. Okay, Wendy, uh, then uh, if that's it, um, we can move on. But I would like to invite everybody, if you haven't already done so, to please put in the chat your name, your organizational affiliation, and your email address so we can stay in touch with you. If you could do that now, if you haven't already, that's wonderful. And uh, let me uh, now introduce the team that uh, the National Park Service and Lewis and Clark Recreation Trail. And um, let's start with Russ. Um, yeah, Russ Clark. Where are you, Russ? I can't see on my screen. Russ Clark, landscape architect with the National Park Service Rivers, Trails, and Conservation Systems Program, known as RTCA. I work out of the Kentucky Field Office. Thank you. Great to have you, Russ. We'll hear more from Russ in a moment. Andrea. I'm Andrea Ireland. I'm also with the National Park Service RTCA in the Ohio Field Office. Nice to see so many people on this call. Yeah, a lot. It's great. Um, okay, so John. Um, John Olivier here. I'm a retired Parks and Rec guy for a long time, and I'm helping Russ and Andrea and all these fine people on this great project. Great. Thank you. Michael. Michael Schilling with the National Park Service RTCA, my community planner out of Atlanta. And Larry. Yes, Larry Calhoun. I'm the outdoor recreation planner from the National Park Service and the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail based in Omaha, Nebraska. Excellent. And uh, David Wicks. Uh, I'm David Wicks from Louisville, Kentucky, uh, and I'm co-chair of the Ohio River Recreation Trail. And my favorite thing about Portsmouth is the confluence of two rivers. Ah, Jack Sutton. Hi there, Jack Sutton here. I'm a volunteer with the Ohio River Recreation Trail. Prior to that, I had 33 years in the world of conservation parks and recreation in great parts of Hamlin County. I live in Aurora, Indiana, which is 140 river miles downstream of Portsmouth. So another river town on the Ohio River. And Jerry Schulte. Yeah, I'm Jerry Schulte. I'm also with the Ohio River Recreation Trail, one of the volunteers. I do a lot of the uh, safety and media work for the group. Um, I think uh, I spent 35 years doing uh, water quality research on the Ohio River for Orsanko and uh, was a uh, state naturalist at Shawnee State Park many, many years ago. And I think the thing I like most about Portsmouth, and I hope Sam Sutherland appreciates this, is the quality of the drinking water. <laughs> That's wonderful. And Mary Allen, we're so glad to have you. You can go off mute. Here I am. Um, hello, I'm Mary Allen. I'm a retiree. I'm a recent board member of the Ohio Riverway. And I live in New Richmond. I'm on Village Council, and my community went through one of these uh, reviews already. Well, thank you very much, uh, everybody. It's, it's an amazing cross section of folks, and uh, with your collaboration, we'll move this project, this uh, this meeting forward in uh, lightning speed. And Wendy, thank you very much for doing a great introduction, and for everybody else keeping it short and quick. Um, so, if we can go on to the next steps here with our program here. Um, uh, we have an agenda, that which we'll show on the screen in a quick second, and I want to let everybody know that we are uh, recording this, so anybody, you know, whatever you say will be uh, preserved for, for posterity, and also we'll be able to uh, send folks the link so other people will be able to see this, pro this program. 
Um, and again, feel free to use the chat. If you have any comments or questions, we'll capture the chat as we record this. And uh, so if there's any suggestions you have along the way, uh, things you wanna make sure we flag, please use that. Uh, please mute, mute yourself when you're not speaking and if possible, keep your camera on. Um, and now we go into, uh, so this is our, our agenda for the meetings. You can see we're more or less on time. Uh, so right now we go into a quick little wrap about what the big picture is. We'll talk about uh, the Ohio River Recreation Trail um, and about the Lewis and Clark Trail um, and then move on into the next next uh, section here. So bottom line is uh, the Ohio River Recreation Trail is a pretty cool concept and it was developed by a bunch of volunteers who love the river, river rats like myself and David Wicks and Jack Sutton and others um, who envisioned a, a, a recreational trail on water and on land from Portsmouth all the way down to uh, West Point, Kentucky, which is south of Louisville, a 274 mile stretch of the Ohio that shares so much in common. We have about 35 uh, very unique river communities, big ones like Cincinnati and Louisville, of course. You actually are the third largest community uh, along the trail. So it goes, uh, I don't know, Cincinnati or Portsmouth, who knows, um, or Louisville, who knows which is the biggest, but you're the third largest uh, population center of all these communities along the trail that you can see. And our vision is to create um, a, 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 a braided network and ribbon of um, beautiful gems, which are the river towns along the way, all their connecting, all of their outdoor recreation assets and historical, uh, 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 their history and uh, historical sites, but create a reason for people who live in this region and people who live outside it uh, to come and explore this incredible uh, trail uh, of, of, of history, of recreational opportunities, of nature appreciation. Um, and so we created this organization. We now have an official 501c3, and we've developed a very amazing partnership with the National Park Service over the last two years. They essentially adopted us as one of their major projects, one of the only of this size in this part of the country. Uh, we're working closely with the Army Corps of Engineers as well. And our vision is uh, to make the Ohio River an accessible and welcoming recreation corridor with vibrant towns, you all, connected by land and water trails. And our mission as an organization is to facilitate world-class outdoor recreation and adventure opportunities from Portsmouth, you're the anchor, upstream, to West Point, downstream, through partnerships that promote healthy recreation, education, tourism, stewardship, and economic development for Ohio River uh, communities. Um, and our, our goals essentially are to promote recreational use of the Ohio River for paddling, boating, fishing, cycling, um, hiking, tourism, et cetera, help river communities boost their economic development and quality of life uh, by taking advantage of those and promoting those recreational event uh, opportunities, uh, promote and support public access to the Ohio and its tributaries, um, and facilitate partnerships that help uh, market uh, the benefits of the High River Recreation Trail and help drive people to this region and this community. Uh, so that's a basic summary. Uh, we have a website, which we encourage you to look at uh, and explore, spend a little time with it. That's a picture of one of the trips that we took from Louisville to Cincinnati, uh, to, from Cincinnati to Louisville. Uh, we've done a number of trips and we'll probably do another one in June, which will connect uh, you to. Um, we have a lot of uh, the, the past, uh, uh, the past um, Rivertown Review reports. This is our 12th community uh, with a, a Rivertown Review. We've done 11, uh, including Maysville and yesterday and uh, Madison on Tuesday. And all those reports are available online. And of course, you will all be receiving a report from this uh, process. Um, it'll be developed by the National Park Service with uh, recommendations that, that come out of your input and your best thinking about what you love best, what you think can help sell your community the most. And that'll be presented to you within a number of weeks, uh, probably six or eight weeks by the time we get it together. Uh, but that can then be shared with your city council, with your county commission, and uh, county commissioners and elected officials at the city level, we're so grateful for your involvement because nothing happens, nothing happens that really sticks uh, without lo local elected leaders uh, adopting uh, and integrating into their uh, local governmental entities uh, these kinds of recommendations and initiatives. So please check out the website and uh, you will also see on the website something that we developed which is quite unique in collaboration with the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments, which is called our digital guide to the Ohio River. 
uh, which uh, identifies in, in a digital format uh, on your phone, uh, showing you where you are at any given moment. So if you're in the river, in a powerboat, on a bike, on the shoreline, in a kayak or canoe, you can see exactly where you are in relation to the rest of the, uh, the region. And you can see where the different amenities are, whether there are, are fuel docks, marinas, campgrounds, um, uh, 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 other places to, uh, to recreate, local parks, um, nature centers along the way, uh, boat ramps, of course, um, uh, unique fishing spots. What's also unique about this is that um, it has all the safety information rolled in about barges. So we have what's called the AIS system for barge traffic integrated into the webs into this uh, application so that if you're in the river, you can see exactly where the barges are, what speed they're traveling, the name of the barge, the direction they're going, and it's updated every 15 seconds. So it's an amazingly useful uh, safety tool. And, and the Coast Guard says they've never seen anything like it. And, and that's one of the reasons why OKI got a national award just this past summer for the application of GIS technology uh, to, uh, to safety. So um, that's basically a, a quick summary of the Ohio River Recreation Trail. I'd like to turn it over now to Larry Calhoun uh, with the uh, Lewis and Clark uh, Trail, uh, a wonderful partner of ours that offers tremendous promotional benefits to you all in Portsmouth. So take it away. Thank you. Uh, the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail is administered by the National Park Service. Uh, it's currently more than 4,900 miles long from point to point, traversing through 16 states from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to the Pacific Ocean. The trail has over 6,600 miles of designated auto tour routes. Uh, which provide visitors access to the historic route. In 2019, the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail was extended east from St. Louis, adding 1,200 miles uh, to include along the Ohio and Mississippi rivers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Wood River, Illinois. What the Park Service uh, has done uh, starting in July of 2021, uh, we launched a website, uh, lewisandclark.travel. Uh, we are committed uh, with this website, we are committed to telling the stories along the trail uh, by adding uh, small businesses and attractions uh, from your communities. We wanna hear your stories about your communities. Uh, the Park Service is here to support you to tell your stories and to work together. The primary goal for our partnerships is to encourage visitation from the traveling public to all the businesses and communities and attractions and destinations along the Lewis and Clark Historic Trail to help local businesses and communities and attractions and destinations to have more visibility and economic sustainability and to share your unique stories about the land linking the past and the present. This program will always remain completely free to anybody that wants to participate. And the Park Service invites all to work closely with us as a community partner. Your designation as a partner will allow for closer communication, working together to help promote sustainable visitation and economic development in your community. An example of one of the things the Park Service will provide is auto tour route signage for the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail to the designated the auto tour routes throughout your community. To learn more about the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail Sustainability Community Partnership Program and to join us to help showcase your community, uh, please go to lewisandclark.travel and if you have any questions, feel free to contact myself or to uh, register your listings from all, uh, anyone in your community. Thank you. Uh, from this point, I will turn it over to Andrea Ireland from the National Park Service. Thank you, Larry. Uh, as I said in the beginning, I'm with the Rivers and Trails, <laughs> Rivers, Trails and Conservation Assistance Program of the Park Service. Oftentimes people wonder, what is the National Park Service doing down here on the Ohio River? There isn't a national park here, is there? Uh, well, our program goes out into communities all over the country 
we carry out the mission of the Park Service. The second half of the mission is very important to what we do. It's the Park Service cooperates with partners to extend the benefits of natural and cultural resource conservation and outdoor recreation throughout the country and the world. And that's exactly what RTCA does. We work with all kinds of partners like you um, throughout the country. We work on all kinds of projects, small ones, big ones. We uh, bring a variety of skills to the table depending on which RTCA person you're working with. And we generally work as a team to accomplish these projects where uh, we can make that happen. There's a number of us on the call today. Russ Clark, who you will be hearing from shortly, who is in the Southeast region in the Kentucky office. Michael Schilling, who's in the Southeast region and down in Florida. And we have an experienced worker uh, through our one program that is uh, John Olivier, who's helping us out as well. So the Park Service comes in, we partner with you to help you on your project. And that's what we did with the Ohio River Recreation Trail about two and a half, three years ago. We started working with them. And part of that process of developing what will come to be, uh, what is now the Ohio River Recreation Trail, was looking at how we could connect communities and promote recreation. So we thought about this program of river town review, how we could get communities to take a new look at themselves, that we could come in and provide our technical assistance to help them to take a look at themselves and help them to realize their vision. We really were interested in connecting communities back to the river. You have this great resource right in your back or front yard and are you taking full advantage of all that that can do for your community? And the other part of that is that we really wanted to connect communities to each other along the way. When we started, our intention was to come out and visit each of these communities, spend a day or two, have an in-person meeting. Um, we never got to do that. Uh, we've been at this a long time and we've, uh, well, we've all been at this a long time, right? And we have really shifted and improvised and worked it out so we can do these virtual meetings. Uh, I have to say, we have not had a meeting with this many people in it um, yet. So uh, bear with us as we may experience some technical difficulties trying to fit you all on our screens and our post-it boards. Um, and keeping track of all of you. I'm, I'm on multiple screens here and I don't know where everybody's at. Uh, so part of the Rivertown review process, you're coming in maybe about halfway through because we've already spoken with those contacts in your community. We have done, they have applied for this service of a Rivertown review, these fresh eyes on your community. They were accepted, selected. They've provided us with information on the front end. And we've already done some work as far as a desktop review that you'll hear more about. What's your virtual presence out there to the world as far as recreation um, and their connection to the river? We've done a visitor assessment. We've looked at your town from our eyes. And now this community meeting where we're getting your input we're going to gather all of the information that we receive and we will receive a lot of information today. And we're going to put that into a report, report back out to you. And that will be something that you can use with your elected officials, with your community members to look at things a little bit differently. Um, perhaps take advantage of some of our recommendations for short term, uh, low, low-hanging fruit kind of ideas that would be easy to implement and maybe shifting your focus for long-term implementation of ideas as well. And then eventually we would like to have another Ohio River Recreation Trail Summit. We had one of those back in October. It was very successful. We pulled together all of the river communities who had already done this review process and many, many others to take a look at the future of the Ohio River Recreation Trail. 
more of those connecting communities and promoting recreation. We see this program now being even more valuable, this Rivertown Review Program, as you come out of COVID and to give you some sustainable ideas of how to bring back tourism to your community, how to keep it in the event of the next shutdown, God forbid, and how to make it more sustainable and relevant to not only tourists, but your own residents as well, as far as realizing all the benefits of economic development and healthy outdoor recreation and connecting to other communities. So that being said, we, uh, oh, and if you would like more um, uh, specific RTCA assistance, we are accepting applications until uh, March 1st for our next round of assistance. And this ORRT effort has provided us with many, many project uh, opportunities. So uh, if you like what you see, check out our website. And now I'd like to introduce my coworker, uh, Russ Clark, who's gonna talk a little bit more about your town and take us into the SWOT analysis. Thank you, Andrea. It's a pleasure to be here. Whenever I begin to look at a new community, I start with the 30,000 elevation and look down. This aerial photo shows the confluence of two rivers in an event flood stage, uh, which shows more water than normal, but this is what happens when uh, those type of events occur. Horsemouth is located with that confluence of the two rivers, which offers a unique opportunity for outdoor waterfront recreation. It also has a great relationship to the Shawnee State Forest in terms of proximity and well connected with different interstate roadways. Next slide, please. You also have already identified many fantastic cultural assets within your community and then you are promoting them as this is one of the pieces that you provided us to, to learn more about your community. Next slide. I also always look at the uh, comprehensive plan that a community may have or what they plan for the future and how they're looking at the future and how the relationship of parks, recreation, and water related activities play into the future development of the community. And I want to say you have a very well done master plan to guide the community into the future as I've observed that master plan. Next slide. This angle view gives a little bit more of the topographic challenges that you are faced with, with the uh, configuration of the two rivers coming together. However, you've, I, you have a great uh, waterfront and riverfront park area. Uh, you have lot, uh, several parks connected throughout the community and your riverfront is walkable to your central business district, which is a great asset to have with any water related recreation opportunities. Next slide. As we look at various things, we've got two uh, existing launches on the Ohio River itself. And when we start looking at water trail related activities, we use a, 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 a ruler of six to 10, uh, 12 river miles for a day long activity on the river. And you have uh, access sites upstream uh, on the Ohio River, downstream on the Ohio River that fit within that category and upstream on the Dakota River. So you are well situated from a vendor's possibility or pro, uh, opportunity uh, to provide outdoor recreation on these riverways, water trails. Next slide. That's the this, uh, next step, we're gonna start talking about a SWOT analysis. And with this SWOT analysis, we're going to engage you into the process to provide your thoughts on the internal origin of strengths, what makes your community really strong, what are some of the weaknesses that you may have, and then from an external origin, what are some of the opportunities that are out there, and what are some of those threats? And you're gonna do that through an interactive software. Uh, and again, we will go through more of those aspects. I'm gonna turn it over to Michael to explain this process. Michael? Thank you, Russ. Yes, I'm Michael Schilling. Um, we're going to be using a program called Mural. It's a uh, powerful tool that lets us do what we would be doing in person with sticky notes on a whiteboard virtually. Now, with that being said, we have not done this with almost 50 people. 
So we're going to do our best here. Um, before I drop this link into the chat, um, I think we have a, a few people possibly on their phones. Unfortunately, this program does not work for you all on the phones. So I will ask that you, if you want your input onto the mural whiteboard, you can put it into the chat. If you'd like to say anonymous, you can direct message um, a uh, planning team member, perhaps Jack. Yes, Jack's I'm available, okay. Michael. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jack. Um, and so we'll be monitoring the chat to make sure your input gets on as well. Um, yes. I'm sorry, Michael. Can we ask David to pick up some chat as well? Got it? Okay. Um, and if you're on a phone and you can't put if you, if you don't have the ability to put input in right now, there will be more opportunities after this. We will do some follow-up and you can add to the things that are being input today. Um, and just please bear with us as we try and manage. Um, our our post-it boards are, are not big enough for 47 people. So uh, we'll, we'll make do here. I did uh, expand them, but it still may not be big enough. So we shall see. Um, when we get into this program, you'll be, uh, you can put your name in, or if you'd like to stay completely anonymous, you can just enter as a visitor. Everyone will be assigned a random animal. And with that, I'm going to drop the link in chat and go and hit that link and that'll open up your browser to the mural. And we'll wait a second for everyone to come on in. Okay, up to 30 people in. I will go ahead and hide everyone's cursors. And welcome to Mural. So the way you can navigate around Mural is if you hold down your mouse and click and drag, you can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can also do that through the plus and minus in the bottom right. We'll be using stickies. And the way you do that is you just double click and that'll create a sticky. And I'll go ahead and we've got, let's see, 33 folks in. And we're gonna do this one at a time. We're gonna be going through strengths first, then we'll take a vote, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And I'll go ahead and summon everybody to the strengths. Great, thank you, Michael. Uh, as you start uh, entering your thoughts on strengths, I will give you some things to think about. Um, what are some things that we could build on to make our community better? Excuse me, Russ, sure. can we just make sure, I know there's a lot of people, sure. but if there's anybody who is having trouble getting in? Yes. Yeah. Or, or anybody... if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, Sometimes it's a little tough to get going. We, we generally do an icebreaker, but in the interest of time, we aren't doing that. So just remember you double click to make a new post-it note and then click outside of that post-it note to go and make another one. All right, yes, thank you. And we, yeah. we, and we will be moving some post-it notes around too. Right. I'm sorry, uh, Russ. That's fine, we, 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 we definitely need to try and group things together where we can. We will have a lot of post-it notes. And uh, please uh, take your time to think about the strengths that you have that make your community special. What are some things that your community does well? Are there any uh, unique resources in your community? Just highlight those as strengths. But do you have qualities that separate you from your competitors from other river towns? We did have a hand raised. Um, Charlotte, did you get your an uh, question answered? Her hand went down, we'll assume that she did. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you monitoring that for me. Uh, 
are there any uh, tangible assets that your community has that are really unique and strengths? What do others see as your strengths as a community? So those are just some general ideas to think about and strengths, things to build on, things your community does well, qualities to separate you from your competitors, internal resources such as skilled and knowledgeable staff, definitely strengths, tangible assets, in your community. And then maybe what others see as your strengths as a community. Great ideas coming up on the whiteboard. Should we be able to see the whiteboard? Yes, if you've logged in to the link, the Merrill link, you should be able to see it. If you clicked on that in the chat box. Okay. In the chat box, there's a link. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Just Thank an you. idea for those that are on the phone that may not be able to see and join in. We could share the screen of the whiteboard here instead of seeing everyone's faces. Yeah, the only problem with that, it gets really confusing because then you're seeing two screens of the same thing. Um, we, we, yeah, we've tried that. Okay, makes sense, Andrea. You guys are the experts. I'm very impressed with all the information that's coming in. And as Michael had indicated, as we uh, wind down on the strengths here, we will then uh, go into a voting exercise where we will give you three votes. And we ask you to look at three different things that you would consider to be out of all these ideas on strengths to be your top three choices. And we prefer that you do each vote on a different, uh, different idea. What that does for us is it helps us understand what you folks feel are your priorities, your, your number one strengths. Things your community does well, things to build on, unique resources, all strengths. Okay. Time's up. So that airplane sound is our uh, cue. It's time to take a vote. We've got a lot to vote on here. So like Russ said, we'll have three votes per person. Please spread those out to three different sticky notes with three different ideas. And we will be voting. Uh, the way you vote is you left click on that sticky note. If you accidentally select a sticky note that you didn't want to vote for, you can right click on that sticky note and that'll give you your vote back. You maybe can vote it. You will see a red dot come up on the corner of the sticky note that identifies that you have voted for that particular idea. And we can't see each other's voting at this process, during this process. So uh, just take your few moments here to look through and pick your top three then we will see the polling results here in a moment. One minute to complete your voting.
We do have some who um, said that their internet connection is not strong enough to run mural at the same time. We understand and you will have other opportunities to uh, provide input. That's right. After the workshop, we will compile all these lists, identify the voting. We will combine certain things together, like things together, I should say, to compile that list and you will see the voting results, but you also have the opportunity to provide more input. Hey, I will end the session. And these are your results. You can scroll up and down to see all the results that were voted on. Yeah, three items we see the top votes of four piece. Murals dedicated with, with dedicated bike path, natural resources in area, and home to the Shawnee State University. Those were the top vote getters. Um, another thing is, is that when we compile this information, we will be putting things of like mind together um, and things that are voted on of like mind, we will put those votes together. We know there's a, some things that are repeated uh, and that just demonstrates even more value for you to your community. And uh, to exit out of the voting, there's a, a white X in the upper right corner. You will click on that to exit out of the voting poll. Re voting results, I'm sorry. And Michael will then summon us to the summon us to the weakness module. And you can begin to uh, start posting your thoughts and ideas on what you consider to be weaknesses of internal origin. Uh, things to, such as issues to overcome, what could be improved, things your community lacks, what another community has that you wish you had, things that your competitor does better than you, perhaps where you have fewer resources than others, And what are others likely to see as your weaknesses? Well, they're just some thoughts to help stimulate ideas for the category of weaknesses. Wow. Going fast and furious. <laughs> weaknesses, things to overcome. What could be improved? Things that your competitors do better than you. If we were doing this in person, everybody would be asking for more post-it notes, please. <laughs> yes. Things to overcome. What could be done better? Got about a minute and a half left. Keep adding your thoughts. One minute left. Things to overcome. What could be improved? Things your community may lack. What do your competitors do better than you? 
Where do you have fewer resources than others? What are others likely to see as your weaknesses? And as you're putting in ideas, you see other thoughts up there on the whiteboard that might stimulate new ideas from you. That's great. Five seconds left. All right, we're going to do another voting session. This time, just for weaknesses, I'm going to resummon everybody just to make sure we're on the right page. And then we'll do weaknesses. Once again, you'll have three votes. And you may begin voting. At this point, I'd like to check in and make sure nobody's having any problems with the uh, voting or the software. It's hard to read all of them and then decide also what, what you want to vote for. And about 20 seconds left before we close the voting. Please cast your three votes. Okay. Great. So we had nine votes on the opiate epidemic. And the next high was five votes was population decline as weaknesses. And the third highest vote with four votes was the perception that the Ohio River is polluted. So, well done. Uh, Michael, have you had a chance to capture the screen? Just about. Okay, great. We, we are doing a screen capture so that we can report to uh, provide this information back in the report. So we will be doing this uh, same thing again for the next two modules of the SWOT analysis. And we'll be looking at opportunities and threats of the external origin. So again, to exit out of the voting, go up to the uh, right-hand corner and click on the X on the computer. And then Michael will summon us to the opportunities quadrant. And I would say, don't be discouraged by um, so many weaknesses. It's good that you, many of you voted on the same thing. You recognize what your weaknesses are. And sometimes in the middle of difficulty lies great opportunity. Absolutely right. So begin posting your ideas for opportunities things to explore. Are there any underserved markets in your community that you're aware of that should be brought out? Underserved markets. What are some things that the community lacks? It would be an opportunity. Are there any trends that you could take advantage of that you see other communities going in a certain direction that your community could take advantage of those new trends. What don't you have that would make your community better? How can you turn your strengths into opportunities? A lot of correlation between strengths and opportunities, weaknesses, threats. Things to explore. Underserved markets, emerging trends. What don't you have that you wish you had in your community?
all opportunities. So in three modules, you've, you've gone from beginning to intermediate to advanced. You know this software well. Things to explore, underserved markets, things your community may need, potential trends to take advantage of. What don't you have that would make your community better? opportunities. Uh, about 30 seconds left. Okay, just like before, three votes per person. Please spread them out for three different stickies, three different ideas, and you may begin voting. Remember, you can zoom in, make it easier to read. Eight seconds left, complete your voting. I always feel hey. like I have to fasten my seatbelt when I hear that sound. That's right. Number one, nine votes coming in. Opportunity for a world-class bike path along unused north N and W Railway west of town. It's a fantastic opportunity. Second highest vote was seven votes. Extraordinary water trail opportunity on Spittle River, 100 miles unimpounded. That's a phenomenal opportunity. And the third highest vote getters were linked to Shawnee State Forest and Park with downtown via recreation trails, uh, in addition to riverfront development and restoration of Spartan Stadium. Those were the top vote getters. Great opportunities. So as Michael captures the screen on this voting poll, uh, when he's completed that, we'll move into the last quadrant, which will be threats. And as I mentioned before, uh, threats and weaknesses have a lot of overlap, like strengths and opportunities. But with threats, what are some things to minimize? Uh, any emerging competitors? What threats could harm your community? Are there any, what threats uh, out, are there that, out there that do your weaknesses expose you to? 
relationship between weaknesses and threats. And are you aware of any regulatory issues that are gonna be threats for your community? Things to minimize, emerging competitors, what could harm your community? We have a minute 25 left to enter your threats. And the entire squad analysis becomes a foundation that we utilize to help understand your community better. And it really also becomes a warm up effort or the brainstorming that we'll be doing shortly. So you are now experts in the use of this software. Uh, when we get into the brainstorming, we'll be doing it again, and we'll be able to move it along much quicker. And we want you to really think of all ideas with brainstorming. And Andrea will lead you through that. About 30 seconds left to post your final thoughts on threats. Now we'll begin the polling process. May begin voting. Please pick your top three and a chance to look at all of them. Thirty seconds to complete your voting. Okay, voting results, six votes, two items, economic and social weight of the opi epi epidemic, and too many opiate treatment facilities. These are threats. The next high vote getter at five votes was aging infrastructure. And the third highest at four votes was conflicting ideas on natural resource use, economic versus recreational. Well done. I appreciate your input in the SWOT analysis. Now I'd like to turn it back over to Brewster. Okay, I'm sorry, I apologize folks. Uh, you can all hear me now? Wonderful. Well, thank you, Russ, for taking us through that process, Michael, as well. Um, amazing amount of input and feedback and uh, interesting themes that come out of all this. Um, and one of the things that pops is 
how much you all are aware of the natural uh, uh, assets that you all have, the recreational opportunities you currently have in place, and how much you are thinking that they can be developed, whether it's bike trails, uh, additional um, you know, outdoor recreational amenities, et cetera. So I, I'm going to first speak briefly about um, the uh, outdoor recreation assets that you all have uh, in, in, in an amazing way. And what we did is have 19 people from um, anywhere from 20 <laughs> to 200 miles away uh, spend an hour to two hours researching online what they can find out about your community. If they were interested in planning a visit, uh, what they learning what they could do there, uh, what would be compelling to make them want to come, et cetera. But in the course of that, I'll talk in a second about the critique of the actual social, I mean, the websites and the information that people can find online. But what came through to those folks uh, as, they, as, they, as they tried to uh, dive deep into Portsmouth, Scioto County, the entire region, including Adams, uh, is you guys have an incredible array of outdoor recreation amenities um, and, and amazing reasons for people to come and visit, including all your historic sites, uh, the history you have in, throughout the community. Uh, but there are so many things for people who love being in the outdoors to do. And I just, I see we have Ted Strickland having just joined us. Governor, it's good to have you with us and I'm sure you'll chip in at some point. Um, but thank you for joining us, Ted. Um, but the bottom line is you all have the ability to reposition your region as one of the top outdoor recreation communities in the Midwest. Nobody else that we work with along the Ohio River from Portsmouth down to south of Louisville has the assets all in one compact area that you all have. Think about this. You all have <clears throat> seven state parks, forests, and preserves, anchored, of course, by the amazing uh, Shawnee State Park and Forest, the largest state forest, of course, in the uh, state of Ohio, um, and what's often referred to as, you know, as uh, the Little Smokies of the Ohio, uh, of Ohio. And you also have, of course, the Scioto Brush Creek uh, Preserve, the Brush Creek State Forest, the Raven Rock State Nature Preserve, the Edge of Appalachia, the White Lake State Park, and the Wayne National Forest, all within 20 to 35 miles away from you all. And if you see yourself as a center where people can come and spend a weekend, they can take little day trips going 10 miles here, 20 miles there, 30 miles there to enjoy all these assets. It's just important to see all the things that are in the region that you can in turn market as a reason for, for people to come visit. Hey, actually move there. What the heck? But imagine being able to market Portsmouth, Scioto County, your part of Southern Ohio, as a place where uh, the outdoors is a way of life. Uh, it's a place where people who are into being outside, cycling, paddling, fishing, hiking, camping, uh, skiing, uh, hunting, all those other outdoor, outdoor activities, running, they can do it after work and on the weekends while they have a job that they like uh, in your community or they're, they're working remotely and are able to do what they love uh, whenever they have the time to do it without having to drive great distances. You all have it. Uh, you also have 17 local parks. You have 12 rivers and lakes to paddle, boat, fish, swim, water ski, etc. Think about that. There is no other region. Uh, Cincinnati has a lot of rivers, but you all have within a very close driving distance uh, 12 rivers and lakes that people can enjoy. You have four marinas. Cincinnati doesn't have has exactly four marinas for that whole metropolitan area. You have three public boat ramps. You have eight campgrounds. Nobody else has eight campgrounds. No other community has eight campgrounds within 10 miles of their downtown. Uh, you have your pump track, your skate park, um, your downtown multi-use trail, which is amazing, so beautiful. Uh, and you soon will have the River City Adventure Company. So you'll have your own uh, outdoor store uh, so that people can rent, I assume, and certainly buy uh, outdoor equipment that'll anchor um, uh, this outdoor recreation stuff. And in addition to all that, as you all know so well, you have these very unique historical sites and attractions ranging from uh, Raven Rock uh, to the Serpentine Mounds and nearby Peebles. People will drive 37 miles to Peebles if, uh, if, to go for a day trip from uh, Portsmouth. Um, you, you, of course, have the Roy Rogers Boyhood Home. You have the Ohio and Erie Canal uh, Lock. You have uh, the Floodwall Murals, which are the number one rated uh, visitor uh, attraction, according to Yelp and um, uh, TripAdvisor. Um, and of course, you have uh, the Southern Ohio Museum. And of course, my favorite, the 1810 House, as you heard before. 
So once again, you are unique in this part, from Portsmouth to the south of Louisville, there is no other community that has all those assets within a short driving distance of people staying downtown in your community or camping at a campground nearby. So then the next challenge is, how do you make sure people know about all that and are in turn drawn to come? And the pictures you see here are just an example of the beauty of your community, your flood, your riverfront, uh, your, the Grant Bridge. Uh, you can see that this on the screen right now, uh, the rent that the, the uh, artwork for what your uh, earthworks uh, used to be before it was developed, of course. But apparently, I don't think there's any other earthworks that continues across a major river, certainly not in America, uh, which yours was designed, was built to do. Um, and of course, you have marinas and uh, the fuel docks and all kinds of other amenities. And I know that Tracy is working on an application to, the, to ODNR, Natalie, um, that for funding for um, a, a uh, handicap accessible floating uh, canoe and kayak uh, dock that could be placed on the Scioto if it can all work out. So uh, you're already taking initiatives to further build on your outdoor uh, 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 recreation amenities that you already have in the community. Um, secondly, let me briefly speak about um, the, what we call our desktop review. So as I said, we had 19 people who spent one to two hours researching you online, trying to figure out if they wanted to spend a weekend or a day trip even, what could they do? Where could they stay? Where could they eat? What were the outdoor uh, amenities that are available? Uh, if they're a cyclist, uh, a fish, they like to fish, paddle, hike, camp, et cetera. Um, and here's, you know, the, 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 what was exciting in many ways is uh, that, that your existing websites, you know, for the city, for the county, uh, for the visitors bureau uh, that with the counties runs the Chamber of Commerce site, the uh, uh, Main Street Portsmouth site. There's a lot of great information, especially for local residents, but also for out of towners. Basic information about what's going on in the community and throughout the county. Um, the visitors guide, the printed version was highly uh, reviewed. But the bottom line, this is a little, this is a concern, and I'm, I'm going to be straight talk here. Uh, they found that overall, the, the digital presence incomplete somewhat disjointed and not very compelling to them as folks who don't really know the community very well. Uh, one of the concerns was that the information was very spread out across these various uh, different sources of information, different websites. One person wrote, there's a confusing split between the official city website and the website of the Chamber of Commerce. Another noted that a clear cut visitor's website is hard to find. I had to search for the Chamber site, which covers a wide area, not just Portsmouth, which is good, and had to dig on the Portsmouth page to find the Main Street Portsmouth nonprofit, which seems to have the most information. Another challenge is that the uh, key websites have URLs that, are over, that overlap. So you have PortsmouthOhio.org, you have Portsmouth.org, which is the Chamber site, and then you have OhioRiverTourism.org, of course, which is the uh, county's visitors bureau uh, site. Um, so someone said, if you search Portsmouth, Ohio, the official Visitors Bureau site does not come up. You get the city website and the chamber site. If you search Portsmouth, Scioto County, it will pop up, but not all people know the name of the county, one person said. Um, and then uh, the, uh, an overall theme was that the, the digital presence of you all uh, to the world didn't provide what people felt were compelling reasons. Uh, for people to visit, especially those interested in outdoor recreation. Um, one person said, based on what I saw online, my impression is that there's not a whole lot to do in Portsmouth. I would like to see more attractions and things to do in the area because I'm sure there's plenty available. Um, from what I saw on their website, I probably would not plan a visit there. It is not engaging and purely list what's there, but does not try to entice me to visit. Um, telling me a little blurb about why I should visit Portsmouth somewhere would be nice. Links are fine, but people are lazy and want all the relevant information in front of them without having to keep clicking through other websites. It was also almost impossible to find information about marinas, boat ramps, fishing, camping, hiking, or paddling, other than what was very well done in the Shawnee State Park website. Very, very useful information, very well presented. It was very easy to understand what you could do if you went to Shawnee State Park. Um, but uh, information, for example, about biking uh, was limited to inviting visitors to explore downtown Portsmouth by bike, but information about bike trails, bike shops, or rentals could not be found by any of these 19 people. Uh, information about the Buckeye Trail, which is a big deal, goes all over the state of Ohio and right through the Shawnee State Park, um, 
was a little bit present and uh, it, we stumbled across the information about the tour of the Scioto River Valley, the, the tour serve uh, annual bike ride with the 60th one, which is coming up on, in September. It's the, um, I think the oldest bike ride in the Midwest, if not, I'm not sure, but the bottom line is it's a huge, big deal. And um, what a great asset that is for you all to, to market and promote. Folks found the Scioto County Health Department site the most helpful that some shovel did in identifying specific outdoor recreation opportunities. That site, somebody said, was the most useful information to a visitor in one place. It gives a good overview of the kinds of things there are to do and is a good source for trip planning. Um, people are very hungry for information about history, about your community, about your region. It's, an, it's a real reason for people to, it's a way for people to have authentic experience. That's what folks are looking for these days, regardless of age. Uh, information about Native Americans, early settlers, the Underground Railroad, floods, history, past and present, sport personalities and facilities, which you have incredible. African-American history, Revolutionary War land grants, interesting architecture, the Dreamland Amusement Park, family genealogy and home sites. And then, of course, historic sites, your mound, the Raven Rock, 1810 house, uh, the canal, the Ottawa um, Ottawa Cover Bridge, et cetera. Several noted that they learned more about Portsmouth and what they could do there on Wipikidia than on any of the sites that you all have uh, targeting the, the public. Folks really enjoyed Scioto Historical, uh, that site. And Dr. Fate, uh, Fate uh, you have done an amazing job with that. Um, and especially like the Abolitionist and Underground Railroad Tour. Uh, this the Scioto, scenic Scioto Heritage Trail site uh, was very popular with folks. They really liked that. One person said that trail uh, and the associated Native, Native American history is the most articulated experience I discovered. The info is spreading out across several websites. So I think a more centralized place to find all that information would help build a narrative and link together several of Portsmouth's highlights, including the museum, Charlotte. Um, and and uh, almost finally, um, Folks said, we'd love to know what will be an ideal weekend or day in Portsmouth and Scioto County. Uh, sample things to do from morning until night um, is, is what people look for these days, ideally all in one spot. Uh, so finally, recommendations, create one go-to tourism site for the region. It can be co-sponsored by your key organizations, the chamber, the city, the county. Uh, do a lot of search engine optimization. So it's the first thing that pops up. Use more Ohio River pictures. Um, and consider using the Ohio uh, uh, and your placement on it to drive home the lifestyle city message, you know, like Portsmouth, a lifestyle city on the Ohio, or live the life you love in Portsmouth on the Ohio, or Portsmouth, where Southern hospitality begins on the Ohio. Uh, again, sample, uh, wonderful day, uh, amazing weekend. Um, create a master listing on uh, all the events with the exact dates and links to more information about how you can find out about them. Um, River Days, put together a package of things that people can do when they come to River Days, especially if they're from out of town, interested in outdoor recreation. Um, and, um, and then also just finally uh, focus in on your amazing history that people are anxious to learn about because you have it uh, from Native American history, early settlers all the way through. So uh, I, I didn't mean to be overly critical, but I'm just giving you some feedback about what people out of town are, uh, uh, spit back when they're asked to check you all out. And uh, those are their recommendations about what you could do. And we look forward to working with you. We put together um, a seven page master list of all the uh, recreational and uh, amenity, other amenities that could be the basis um, for, um, for what you could do to, to further enhance, either enhance your existing sites or build a new one if you felt it uh, made sense. So um, thank you, I uh, appreciate it. And we'll turn it back, Andrea. Thank you, Brewster. Uh, yeah, that in some ways that's a little bit difficult to hear, but from what I'm seeing, you have so many resources and maybe just part of it is that um, you're taking it for granted because it's all around you and you use it all the time, but that's not necessarily what a fresh set of eyes is seeing from the outside as to what is potential. Um, and I know you don't want to keep it all to yourself. Um, so maybe looking at ways that you could improve tourism or your website or um, there's a lot of suggestions in what Brewster was saying and, and we'll be giving you all that information. 
Um, I thought it was interesting that the health department had really good resources. That's often a group that I encourage my projects to get involved with because healthy recreation, outdoor activity, it all runs together and it's, it's mutually beneficial. Um, so it's good that they're on board with that. We're gonna move into some brainstorming um, activities now. You have shown us um, so much of what you have, just the list that Brewster was running down, the strengths and opportunities that you noted in the SWOT analysis, all the things that we heard about from, um, from Brewster and in the uh, desktop review, uh, just a lot of, of things going on here that you can take advantage of. Um, and I think that this opportunity to have so many people from the community, I'm still just blown away. We're more than an hour into this and we still have 42 people on board here. Um, you win for the record, by the way. Uh, so you are professionals at the mural software and we're going to go ahead and use that again to do some brainstorming. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the next page. Um, so. All ideas are good ideas. Think big. Use the information that you heard in the SWOT analysis. Use what you know about the community. Uh, use what you've heard uh, others saying. That SWOT analysis was meant to get you thinking, not only about the opportunities, but about how you can transfer those weaknesses into strengths. Um, so Michael is going to put uh, a link in the chat. So it will open a new page in Mural for you. We're starting all over again. And you know how to do this. Um, like I said, all ideas are welcome. Big ideas, think about it in terms of if you could ask a genie for something, you know, the magic genie, could you do this for us? Money were no object. Sometimes those ideas help to spur on other things. Um, big ideas, small ideas, uh, easy ideas, low hanging fruit, short term, long term. And I will be giving some prompts um, as we go along. Um, and Michael will be sorting, uh, trying to sort as much as he can between short-term and long-term ideas. If they don't make it into the right category, that's okay. We will do some sorting later on too. Um, so you can begin now. Go ahead and um, given all the, all the ideas, all the things that you have heard and the tools that are available, um, what are some ideas that you have for your community to enhance outdoor recreation, promote opportunities, promote tourism, connect with other communities? Think about ways that you can further engage with the river. Such an amazing asset right there in your backyard. Are you really uh, utilizing it to its fullest capacity? What was the one quote from uh, the one community uh, I think it might have been Augusta that said, uh, there are days when we go to the river and there are days that the river comes to us. Um, you know, you're going to have flooding. And so what do you do with that? Think about ways that you can engage with the Ohio River Recreation Trail. The amount of effort that is being put into this by the steering committee and now the Ohio Riverway and the board members, 
this is a substantial effort that is going to benefit everybody up and down the river by connecting communities and promoting outdoor recreation. How can you better engage with them? Doing this Rivertown review is a really good first step. And think about the ways that you can engage with the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail, all those things that Larry Calhoun was talking about. That is a national, nationally significant trail. And there are visitors who do the entire trail who are very interested in Lewis and Clark history. And there it is right in your backyard. What are some connections that you could make outside of your town? Who's upstream? Because they're going to be coming downstream. And who's downstream? Where are you sending visitors? When they paddle by or motorboat by, do they know what opportunities there are in your town beyond those flood walls? Is there a reason for them to stop? Is it apparent when they're out there? Got about two and a half minutes left. I've been excited to hear about all the mountain biking, the connections to Shawnee, um, the livery that's coming on board. Um, you know, how can you program those more into your community? How can you get the schools involved? How can you get the youth involved? If you've ever um, heard about the organization that Brewster's involved with Adventure Crew, getting underserved youth out there, participating in outdoor recreation, it is a game changer. So think about other programming ideas. Are you utilizing the senior citizens in your community to share their stories of what Portsmouth is to them? Lots of good ideas coming in here. About a half a minute. We're also going to do prioritization on this, of voting on the short-term ideas and the long-term ideas. Doesn't necessarily mean that there's winners and losers. Just helps us to prioritize and look at things. Okay, I'm gonna bring everybody up here. We're just gonna vote on short term first. Just like before, we'll have three votes. The 
but please vote for three separate stickies, three separate ideas. And you may begin voting. Remember, you can um, scroll the wheel on your mouse if you want to zoom in. Uh, some of these are a little bit small to read. You want to finish up your voting? Got about 10 seconds left. Excuse me. Okay, so we have got eight uh, unique votes in targeted social media campaign, market our area and all there is to offer the activities available, use the campaign to drive individuals to a more comprehensive, robust and collaborative web page resource. And then on the next level of votes, things like the new Underground Railroad mural, develop a guide to outdoor recreation for digital and print use. I have some examples of that that um, a few other counties that I've worked with have done, if you're interested in some ideas for that. Get NP and SSU, Shawnee State University and City together to develop website and connect websites. Pool your resources for professional development of a central website that promotes tourism. I think you were listening to Brewster. Um, Okay, so that's really good. Um, and then uh, many things had three votes as well. We're going to, you want to exit out of that poll. And Michael's going to summon us to the long term ideas. And we'll begin voting there now. Okay, we may begin voting just for the long term. I did not have a chance to uh, read most of these before. There's a lot of great ideas in here. Okay, you should be wrapping up with your voting. Okay, what got the most votes? Uh, paved bike path from Portsmouth to Peebles along the unused railway. These are long-term opportunities. Um, complete riverfront improvement and connect downtown with Shawnee State Park and forest via multi-use path. 
Lots of great outdoor recreation ideas. And remember, you can scroll down on the votes um, your, on your own and look at what else received a lot of attention as well. And again, we will be providing you with the results of this. We will gather some of the ideas that are similar, group them together and uh, redistribute some of the votes because some of them are very similar and that will increase the votes. You'll get a report of all of that um, when we're done. And now I'm gonna turn it back Oh, yay, we got confetti. Did you see that? Can you do it again? Yeah, good job. Give yourselves a hand. Excellent work. You've, you've all become very proficient at Mural. You provided a lot of information, lots of good ideas, and hopefully it got you thinking as well. I love the confetti. I'm really glad I didn't miss it today. I missed it yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Brewster. Oh. Um, Thank you, Andrea. Okay. Excellent. So, so uh, we just wanted to bring you uh, up to speed on some of the developments that we're uh, engaged in with the Ohio River Recreation Trail to help uh, expand it, to provide um, the tools that will be helpful to you all in marketing your community even more effectively and in creating uh, a brand for the Ohio River Recreation Trail that we can market throughout the Midwest. Uh, or, or beyond. And we've been fortunate enough to raise uh, a couple of uh, foundation, well, money from some foundations throughout the region uh, to be to enable us to hire uh, a couple of consultants to help us in this process. Um, and one of them is Human Nature, which is a, a very well-regarded landscape architecture firm based in Cincinnati that has worked up and down the Ohio River from Louisville to uh, places all over the place, um, Columbus, et cetera, around um, uh, trails and green space development, park development, et cetera. And uh, one of the things that they are working on is developing a master database that will be able to help us further enhance the existing digital guide to the Ohio River that will also provide very useful, um, so, uh, sophisticated planning tools for communities along the way to start thinking through how they can make connections on, in terms of trail development, uh, where to place boat, and, uh, boat ramps and uh, access points, et cetera. Um, and ultimately to create what we can then brand, uh, use in our branding to help people understand what the heck this trail is all about, what you can do when you engage with it. So uh, with us today to share a bit about what they are doing and frankly, what they need from you all, as well as the other communities up and down the river uh, is Chris Manning and Sarah uh, and Glorio. And so is, is Chris here or Sarah? I would like you to take it away for a presentation, brief presentation on what you are doing for us uh, to help us move forward with this project that will be helpful to every community. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Delandro. Uh, I am a environmental planner, uh, community planner with Human Nature. Uh, we're located in the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area. Um, and First, I just wanna thank you for inviting us to participate or um, to, to just be a part of today. Um, and of course, the, the larger um, Ohio River Recreation Trail effort. Um, so it's, um, we're honored to be a part of it and we're excited for uh, the road ahead. And um, just to give you a little bit of background about human nature, we, uh, like Rooster said, we are a landscape architecture um, planning and design firm. Uh, focusing on all things outdoor, um, uh, parks, greenways, bikeways, um, public spaces, um, both um, large and small scale in small towns and large cities. Um, and we've had the pleasure of uh, working with Brewster and some of the other members, um, on, team members on the call today over the years. Um, and so um, again, looking forward to um, this um, collaboration ahead. You can go to the next slide. Um, so, um, as we've heard today, there is um, just such a wealth of information out there uh, from a variety of sources, and, and so um, one of our tasks 
is to compile, we've been compiling um, all of this amazing data um, and trying to um, get it into a central database. And so information from the OKI guide, um, the Lewis and Clark travel site, uh, National Parks Historic Landmarks, um, the Army Corps uh, information, um, and and then we're also looking into that finer grain of information that we'd we'd like to assemble as it relates to um, ecological assets, historic assets, recreation, cultural entertainment, and adding depth and breadth um, to this database and highlighting unique community assets. Sorry, we're we're still on the the back slide there, um, the first slide. Um, and so, as you see on this larger map. Um, Keep, uh, keep going back to the black, yes. So as you see on this map, you, you were, we're starting to layer in all of this data and you can see this kind of braided network forming uh, with uh, trails that, that in um, both land and water, uh, you know, bike, ped, um, auto, um, boat trails that are weaving together in, um, in uh, forming this braid that links these amenities and celebrating various experiences up and down the river corridor. And, um, and so in this mapping, we hope will, will ultimately uh, inform a digital app experience. Um, we, next slide. We are working with uh, Collar Design also here in Cincinnati to help build a brand uh, that celebrates this braided network and the, the constellations of assets located up and down along the corridor and with the hope of coordinating trail branding, signage standards and signage applications, uh, both along the Ohio River and among all the river communities. So we have um, a coordinated um, um, signage standard. So when people are using the trail or accessing the trail, they know, okay, this is the Ohio River Recreation Trail. This is, I'm on it. And, um, um, and so um, this will be a, a great toolkit um, to, to then pass on to the river uh, communities. Uh, next slide. Um, and so if you zoom in uh, to Portsmouth, you can see our working map here. We're layering, uh, this is just a snapshot of a working map layering on some of the different resources from OKI, uh, National Park Service, uh, Army Corps, um, uh, some national and regional trails uh, here. Um, but, you know, and I heard some amazing assets listed uh, today in the discussion. And as we're building this database with these assets, it would really help to be able to show them all and have them all in digital form so that we can um, show them locationally um, in these maps to highlight these unique um, and special assets um, that are um, that are that are a part of Portsmouth. And so we need your help assembling this data. Um, and so this can come in several formats. Um, typically for, for mapping applications that we're using, GIS shapefiles are ideal. Um, you know, and those come in points, lines, polygons. Uh, points can represent historic sites. Uh, lines, um, like some of your um, um, like trail center lines, uh, mountain bike trails, your hiking trails, uh, your bike bike trails, uh, polygons could represent um, the variety of, of your like, park um, park boundaries, public space, uh, public parcels. Um, AutoCAD files can uh, can be used. They're a little more technical, but they can um, can show up in our, our mapping applications. Um, and if those aren't available, then you know an Excel spreadsheet um, with with the assets and their addresses and coordinates can also be useful and can help us um, locate uh, your specific assets on the map. And so um, this uh, this slide here shows some examples of um, some of these data. Um, um, data themes that we um, are, are interested in that could help um, help you kind of a checklist of um, kind of a call for information for um, anything recreation, trail, historic, you know, tourism um, in the above. And so, um, you know, you may need to reach out to other resources in your community um, that might have access to these, these files, your, you know, city planner or engineers or um, your county auditor for parcel, parcel data, but um, would really appreciate um, 
all of your help. Um, we're asking, you know, all the river communities to help contribute to this finer grain of, of data so that we can um, celebrate um, all that the, all, all that we can. Um, so again, thank you uh, for this, for your time and um, um, the specific checklists of the, of the data uh, will be, of the data ask will be included in a follow-up um, email with some of the other, uh, some other documents from today. Hey, Sarah, thanks so much uh, for all your hard work on this. And from, from, from the point of view of, of Portsmouth, Scioto County, one of the things that this will hopefully end up producing for you is a uh, signage that you can place whether it's a, a small sign uh, uh, or a larger kiosk that could be for information about safety on the Ohio River, about uh, showing, showing where you are in relation to other points of interest along the Ohio. But imagine if every single boat ramp on the entire Ohio River from Portsmouth to south of Louisville would have a standardized set of signage, signs and kiosks that would be educational, that would be wayfinding in nature uh, to create a, a common brand. Uh, and that would uh, be co co-branded uh, with you all. So your logos would be on the signs. It would be along your riverfront, whether it's the Scioto River, the Ohio, um, and other parts uh, along trails, et cetera, uh, within the region. So those are work products that if we can get funded, maybe with help from ODNR, um, we can be able to provide to you all, um, hopefully at, at no additional charge or some cost sharing arrangement that's very reasonable. Okay, so thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it very much. Thank um, you. Before we move on, and we're almost finished here, um, I'm really honored to, to have Ted Strickland, Governor Strickland, uh, uh, join us today. And of course, he's he knows the community so well. And I happened to be talking to him earlier this week and invited him to, if he had time to drop in. And he did. So, Governor, is anything you'd like to share about your love for the community? I didn't tell him he was going to be doing this. So, <laughs> Governor, are you are you uh, still with us? If so, you may be on mute. Oh, well, uh, Governor, uh, chip in if you can when you uh, are able to take yourself off mute. But we're honored to have you join with us. He uh, just loves the community so much and was so excited about what we were doing today. So I'll, I'll try to reach him another way. Um, so we're back to, uh, to you, Andrea and Russ, right. for our closing activity here. We're, we're almost through, um, but we do have a few more things that we're trying to gather information from you about, and we're not going back to mural, but we're going to utilize the chat. And so I hand it over to Russ to ask some very important questions. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, just, we'd like to take just a few minutes here to use the chat box and put down a little description of what would a perfect day be in your town. Where do you take visitors? What, what is important to you for folks to see that have never been in your community? These stories are really important for us, to, again, to help better understand where your most important assets are from your eyes. And these stories also help set the framework for some of the recommendations that we're gonna be bringing forth. So please take a few minutes to jot down in the chat box what a perfect day would be in your town. Where would you go? And then also please think about who else should know about the Rivertown Review and could contribute. Who should know about this process that could provide information that would help us move forth with some recommendations. And lastly, who else would you want to know about this Rivertown Review and could contribute ideas and enthusiasm. So it's who should know and who would want to know that are really important key aspects here. So these items, again, help us expand who we should be reaching out to if we haven't met, had an opportunity to get engaged with them yet. And getting that uh, perfect day in your town story is so important to helping tell the story of your community. Anything you'd like to add to that, Andrea? Um, no, I think that in terms of the who should and who would want to, you know, the should, are there other elected officials? You've had great representation on here with council and mayors. Um, is there anybody else, who, any other decision makers, people that can make things happen, that motivate change, that would want to know about this kind of an effort? 
And who else would want to know? Who are your community champions? Who are the people who, yeah, maybe they're on every committee, but they help to get things done. Who would want to know that this is going on? Who has got great ideas and enthusiasm uh, that you can pull, pull into this program as well? I, I would think uh, Jeremy Burnside, have, have we been able to connect with him? Okay. I'm not familiar with Jeremy, but who I think is he, he with? Invited. I love some of the stories that are coming in. Thank you. Yeah, those stories are and ideas about a great day in the community are just people are just hungry for them, just hungry. So this is very helpful. Did I see that you have a brewery in town, Portsmouth Brewery? Is that still a, in business? Yeah, because I say all trails lead to beer, so. You know, why actually you the know? oldest brewery in Ohio. Oh, there you go. There's a claim to fame. Well, the same family has the Souter River, also uh, well known in Ohio wow. for the best steak. <laughs> for their steak. That's oh, that great. was what uh, one other guy was talking about. Yeah, yeah. I like how you think, Martin. I know, uh, Martin, that's a great, I'm going to do that. That's a great trip. Oh, it's called the Scioto River. I thought you were saying river. I get it. <laughs> okay. And any other questions that you have? You can, uh, you can keep best steaks in the state of Ohio. Um, you can keep answering your best day and who else we should be, who else we should have involved. Um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about our next steps and, and wrapping it up. We will be emailing to you the results of the SWOT analysis after we rework it a little bit, make it easier to digest and the brainstorming list. Try to combine some things of like mind and put them in some kind of a uh, sorting that makes sense. We will be collecting these perfect days in your community and um, the other contacts. We're gonna be sending this out with the checklist of data that Sarah asked for. Um, and we're also gonna ask you to visit the two websites the ORRT website, which is um, includes the digital guide and all of the other Rivertown Review reports, uh, at least nine of them, if you want to take a look and see what the other communities had to say. Um, and also the Lewis and Clark Trail Experience. Those are two websites that you can tune into right away that you can include information. I don't know if you recall on the one, um, on a couple of the slides where there were little blue dots, Portsmouth didn't have a whole lot. Uh, and if you look up and down the river at the communities that have already done the Rivertown Review, there were a lot more blue dots, lots of, lot, much more, many more points of information, sorry, um, because they see the, the value in that, those websites and how you can, very quick, that's a low hanging fruit. So we encourage you to visit those two websites. 
And when we send this out to you, it will be with a call for additional input. If there are people who couldn't get on the mural, if there are um, folks who couldn't make it to the meeting, it will provide you with another opportunity to give us some more information. Then we will be preparing a summary of all of this, not immediately, but in the future. And um, we will provide that back to the town. Um, we also intend to do a summary of all of the River Town reviews, pulling out the conglomeration of um, the power of all of these connecting communities and how ORRT can leverage that or move that to the next place. And we do hope to have another uh, annual summit. We had one that kind of gathered all of the Rivertown reviews that we had done so far in October um, to share challenges and successes and hear from others who are working on similar projects. If you have any questions at all or want to reach out and talk to us, here's the our contact information for both Russ and I, or you can reach out to your ORRT contacts like Brewster or David or Jack, and um, certainly reach out to your community contacts of Tracy and Wendy and everybody else who's been on um, this particular effort. Um, I would like to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I know two hours is a long time and to be so thoughtful and engaged in what we're trying to do here, what you're trying to do for your community, it really means a lot. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this experience, that it gives you um, an opportunity to think about your town from a different perspective. When you go out there, you're going to say, oh, I wish I would have thought of this. Well, remember, we're going to be sending you another opportunity to engage. So, um, And Andrea, before, before we break, um, yeah, I just wanted to emphasize one of the things you said. Uh, once the report is completed, uh, obviously, we'll make it available to every one of you all. But you, one thing you might want to think about is either through a Zoom or if it's possible, do anything face to face. If, if I'm in town, I'll come out there myself, too. But to have a discussion about what the recommendations from the report from the National Park Service staff are and what's the next steps to move as a community together to implement them. Because uh, we, don't, we don't want this to be one of those uh, reports that sits on shelves. So you all, as the most engaged people, could think through what are the next steps on this stuff? Are there subcommittees that could be organized, et cetera? Um, and, uh, you know, can you make a presentation, uh, Mayor Dunn, to the city council uh, and to the county commission about these report, about these recommendations with emphasis on the things that those two bodies could be most, could most effectively take the lead on and maybe make this a presentation to the chamber at a monthly meeting. So those are the kinds of things that uh, help to keep this alive. Um, and uh, I personally look forward to working very closely with you all. Um, and trying to make this, uh, this, uh, all these wonderful ideas you all came up with uh, into reality. And we're, we're happy to act as technical advisors. Uh, it doesn't cost anything because we're all a bunch of retired folks. So, okay. And if the governor is still online, I think he must have had another call here. Um, no, I'm here. Oh, well, well great. I'm sorry. No, I'm help. here. I, I've him. been listening. Okay, well, we have a moment. We, we're, we're grateful that you took the time to join us, and we have a, a moment to hear uh, any of your reactions to all this. Well, um, I'm very proud of, of this community, obviously, um, and um, uh, th th this is exciting to hear folks who are not from the area talk about the area and the potential. That, that's, that's very exciting for me. Um, the area has remarkable history. Uh, if, if you go back and you look at at the uh, at the height of of the of the industrial development in this community, it's remarkable. Uh, at one time, it had the large, I believe, the largest steel steel mill, operational steel mill, maybe in the country. Um, a lot of the military equipment for the you know for World War II the bomb uh, casings and, and other uh, war materials were, were, were developed in this community. So there's a history here. Um, the people who've lived in this community, of course, I'm very fond of Roy Rogers because I grew up about, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a quarter of a mile or less from where he grew up. 
I had a chance to know him when he was older. My parents knew him when he was a young man before he left the area and went to California and changed his name to Roy Rogers from Leonard Sly and became king of the Cowboys. Um, another person from the region that I'm very proud of, obviously, is Branch Rickey, um, the individual responsible for the integration of Major League Baseball. Uh, so there, there's just a lot of natural history in the region um, and a lot of human history in the region and a lot of the industrial uh, economic history in the region. Um, I, I've always felt that, that that we could and should do more with with uh, with the river. Um, uh, my parents, before I was born, lost uh, lost a home in the 37 flood and moved out of Portsmouth out in, out into the country. But um, you know the flood ball was built for good reason. But I've always felt that there was more that could be done to connect the community with the river. Um, Shawnee State University, in my judgment, is the best uh, economic value in terms of higher education, maybe in the state of Ohio. It's small, it's new, um, but there, there are some wonderful programs there, and it's an affordable institution, and it's got some really, really bright uh, 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 teaching staff there. So there's, there's a lot to work with and on. And um, and I hear wonderful things about the mayor. I, I, I really don't know the mayor um, well personally, but I hear wonderful things about his leadership. So I, I think that's the, you know that, that's a bright um, spot in the effort that you're undertaking here. So anyway, I'm just happy that uh, Brewster alerted me to you know your meeting today and and invited me to sit in and listen, and I've enjoyed it uh, very much. And I want to thank all of those of you who have taken the time and and um, and the and the folks you know from from the national level who are expressing an interest in our community we're very grateful for that thank you so much hey thanks so much governor wonderful to have you here um well thanks folks uh, andrea is there anything else that you'd like to share because i think that we're right on the mark we uh, are right on the mark very good job everybody and thank you for bringing us into your community and and uh, telling us all about it. I look forward to the day when I can get down there to see Portsmouth um, and come for a visit. Yeah, and I wanna have permission to spend the night in the 1810 house. What do you think? <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Um, um, thank you very much, folks. It's been a wonderful engagement here. We look forward to working with you. And, and uh, again, I personally uh, will see you uh, in the next couple of months. So. Um, thank you very much. And Wendy, uh, especially you and Tracy for all of your hard work to uh, uh, connect with people and engage them in this process. And to those elected officials, mayor and county commissioners and others, um, and city council members, we're, thank we're very grateful for your involvement as well. Um, okay, we're basically done. Have a great day, folks. We'll be talking to you some more. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you, guys.